This is Good Day Street Talk. Welcome to Good Day Street Talk. I'm Ty Hernandez. Today, we celebrate Father's Day. We're going to hear from the son of Yankee legend Yogi Berra and how his dad's museum may be the perfect place for a Father's Day outing. And then the inspirational story of one man's fight for his life and how he reunited with the man who saved him. But first, Curtis Lewa has been making news and commenting on the news for decades. Today, as we celebrate Men's Preventive Health Week and, of course, Father's Day, Curtis shares his story about surviving prostate cancer. And he's joined by his own physician, Dr. David Samadi, Chief of Robotic Surgery at Mount Sinai Hospital. Welcome to you both. Thank you. Curtis, I'm glad to see you. You've been back at work for a while now, but good to see that you're, you're feeling all right. Or you tell me how you're feeling. Well, feeling great. In fact, uh, after I went... Went under the procedure of Dr. Samadhi at Mount Sinai, the robotics, which is uh, the latest and greatest technique. I was back broadcasting at AM 970, the Apple two shifts, morning drive and PM drive, 72 hours later. Wow. And felt energized, which is something having been through surgery before. I, I couldn't imagine in a month of Sundays that I'd be ready to take on that kind of an ordeal. Now, wait, did you try to talk him out of going back to work so quickly? Is this, or does everyone rebound from the surgery this way? Tell us about the procedure. Well, typically the surgery takes about an hour and a half. And uh, what's unique about the program at Mount Sinai is that I perform the entire case from the beginning to the end. So being present the entire time and making sure that it all goes well is very important to me and my team. Um, they stay one night at the hospital and they go home the next day. It takes about a week or so to recover from this, but here is, you know, <laughs> Curtis is a tough guy and his recovery was fairly quick. And when he announced online that he's going to go back to radio in three days, I looked at him and said, like, now we have a deadline to meet. And he did quite well. I'm very pleased that he's cured from prostate cancer and, and he's doing quite well. And that's the key, you say, in, this, in terms of this procedure, because there are many ways to treat prostate cancer. Here you have... Uh, you can say it's 100 percent. Well, there's no question that you really have to individualize the care. You have to look at every patient in a different way. But there's the advantage of surgery as opposed to radiation and other modalities is that, number one, you get the cancer out. If you have cancer, it doesn't belong there. Get the prostate out. Six weeks after, his PSA is zero, which means that he's cured. So I can look at him and say, you're going to be okay. And we always reserve to have radiation if it's necessary. In 95% of the time, it's not necessary. In those patients, if the cancer ever comes back, we use the radiation at that time to keep the options open. And if his recovery and the quality of life is great from urinary control and other things, then I think this is a great option and the future is here. You know, we have the mammogram for women for breast cancer, but for men, that's all we have. We have the PSA test and you have the prostate exam, which is fairly simple. But there is a lot of taboo and men don't want to go through that. And especially now we're screening men in their 45 or so. so so I think this would be a breakthrough. Number one, there is life after prostate cancer, and you don't have to be afraid. We have a lot of options. Look, still 230,000 men are being diagnosed with prostate cancer every year, and 30,000 men die from this. So we're hoping that as a result of this educational programs, need to know what your PSA is and go for the exam. Not every elevated or high PSA needs biopsy. Not every cancer needs surgery. Always get a second and third opinion and educate yourself and find out what's best for you. And that's really the take home message here. Now you talked about other people's response to your diagnosis. Tell us a little bit about your family, your father. Uh, it's Father's Day coming up. Uh, you guys are maybe celebrating a little bit extra this year? Oh yeah, well my son, little Anthony Chesty, he's seven. He loves to ride the trains with me. So on the hush, hush, mush, mush, we're on the D train at Coney Island. Dirty water hot dog in Nathan's right. And then walk the boardwalk. And I'll be kicking it with the homies because I want to introduce my son to that kind of a lifestyle. It culturally is a little different than what he's used to. But also keep getting the word out because I want my son to see this, that you shouldn't shrink away from your responsibility. Because if, if you truly are a man's man, you're going to confront other men about all the misinformation that they have. And think all the families that are gathered around on Father's Day that may never get together the rest of the year. Perfect time to get in their face and say, did you get tested? And be a nudge. Be like a nightmare on now, because that's what happened with me. People were literally nudging me constantly. What are you going to do? Are you going to go to Dr. Smiley? He told you you got to get it out. Get the robotics. What are you delaying for? What's this holistic homeopathic nonsense? What are you going to be going to the Dalai Lama up next and Deepak Chopra? They can't help you with the prostate. <laughs> Dr. Smiley can. And that's what set me straight. 
All right. Well, listen, great story. Again, we're glad you're feeling better and looking forward to see you out on Coney Island. And Dr. Samadhi, thanks again for joining us. Thank you us. very much. All right. And you can hear Curtis some more on AM 970, The Apple, weekday mornings from 5 a.m. to 9 a.m. and weekday afternoons from 5 p.m. to 7 p.m. And on Saturdays from 7 to 10, the man is busy. He also contributes to our morning show at 4.30 a.m. So, oh, uh, very quickly, yeah. Dick, right? The wise and I remember Dr. Somani. I said, hey, Dick, how about you <laughs> donating your prostate to me, Mr. Mansman? And then all of a sudden he was like, lose my number, pal. I don't want to ever talk to you again. It's like men are afraid the moment you bring up the whole notion of prostate. He was going to do the first prostate transplant in the history of medicine, and none of my friends out uh, there were willing to give it up. Well, I'm glad that he has a great sense of humor <laughs> He's about joking, this. right? Yes, of course. There's no such thing he, as a no, transplant. Okay. He's just having fun with it. It's yeah. great that, you know, he's putting cancer behind, and it's wonderful to celebrate this Father's Day and celebrate everyone's health out there. Um, and, and even for me, it's a special day because I have a son and a daughter, so it is a special day. But usually Father's Day, I get a lot of letters and notes from all the patients that we've been able to help with, and it's a very special day for me and my team at Mount Sinai. All Thank right. you so much. Well, we'll all be celebrating. Thanks again.